Hey everybody, it's Randy. I am in Utah collecting ammonites in the Tropic Shale, which you can see behind me there. And uh, it's been pretty good time so far, finding some good stuff. And I'll show you all that in a minute. But first, check out all this amazing scenery that I've seen on my drive and messing around here in Utah and Arizona. So welcome to Utah and the Tropic Shale. I want to go over the stratigraphy with you real quick that I've been messing around in in here and what we're looking for. So if you look at this, this unit that's right here on, on this angle and you can see it going down this canyon, which is incredibly nice looking. This is the Naturita Formation which is what it's called locally in this area. It's also known as the Dakota Formation elsewhere. And this is a series of like terrestrial sandstone deposits and things like that. And then if you look out here, you can see these darker gray shales in here. That's a tropic shale and that's what we're having fun with in here looking for fossils so this is a marine transgression that comes into here and i'm not exactly sure of the stratigraphy i suspect that maybe these dark gray bands up in there maybe represent maximum flooding in that area but i, I can't say for sure in there but the um also the cenomonian Turonian boundary and that um ocean and oxic event too occurs in in this horizon here as well so that's really interesting and then you can see it starts passing up into re more regressive deposits there where you can start seeing more of these siltstones coming in here this is actually my understanding is a pleistocene truncation that you see in some areas but if you look out this way here you can see this passing up into these blockier sandstones and interbedded siltstones and coals and that's the uh, overlying straight cliffs formation which i believe is what makes up a lot of um, grand staircase escalante and those sorts of things so that's what we're looking at here and um, we i can see some some interesting rock sticking out right here so i'm gonna get to it and see what we can find some fossils if you are a fan of oysters this is the place to be pieces of them absolutely everywhere. So we're in this, I guess we're in upper parts of the shale now. We're higher than we were, yeah, right? we're towards the top of the formation. All right. So we're towards the top of the tropic shale here looking for 2D ammonites preserved in the shale material. And I just split this rock open and found this one, which is, I believe, Conning on the Oceros. You heard it back like there. That. 
that's what it is. But there it is right there. I'll get it home and see if I can chip some of that matrix off of it and make it look good. Hey everybody, we're out here looking for 2D ammonites in the shale. This is actually a big fish that my friend I'm out here with helped find and, and take out there and, and jack it. But he said that there were a lot of ammonites in the shale around it. So that's what we're looking for. Um, I've been too excited to actually film going through the shale. So I promise I'll do that here in a bit. But I wanted to show you some of the stuff I have found so far because I think it's pretty spectacular for 2D stuff. So, so here you go. That's one of the better ones I found there. There is a covering of gypsum all over these things. I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to get off without ruining these fossils. But uh, here's, a, here's a couple more. This is actually a uh, positive negative or positive positive if you're a uh, glass half full kind of a person, which I am. These are pretty spectacularly detailed down here. So it's been good. So far, these are called Kaliganinoceros, or something approaching that. Maybe by the end of the video, I'll pronounce it right, but it's doubtful. I just opened up this piece, and there's a fantastic cluster of them. So, you can see that there's one there, there, and there. There's a little tiny one right there. And actually on the other side, there's a bigger one right there. I know he doesn't look like much, but he is. There's the other side of those other three. So that piece is a keeper. I got this piece my buddy just found here. There looks like there's a death bed here where they're just covered on surface. So let's see if we can keep digging and find some big pieces of this too. So here we go. Here's one, there's one, there's another, that one, there's three right there. And then if you come over here to this side, they go underneath this block, but there's more down underneath there as well. This gypsum makes it so hard to see, but, but they're there. Here we are, just turned up this chunk, I'm starting to get into that deathbed we're not sure how continuous it is if it's an event where they're all dead on one bedding plane or if it's you know a bathymetric low where stuff got washed into so we're trying to trace it around and see what we can find here so i popped off this piece you can see one right there and then there's another one there another nice one there that's the other half of it Here's the other half of the last one. I'm pretty pumped. I just found a monster right here. Just broke this piece apart and pulled this thing out. Look at that. That's huge. And the relief on it, too, for being in the shell is unbelievable. There's my finger for scale. I'm not sure of the species yet. We're going to try and figure that out. But, uh, wow, yeah. That's awesome. The work I've done here on this on this wall... We've moved a lot of rock, did find that guy, and there's the other half, the better preserved half right there. It looks all bumpy because of all that gypsum on there, so i got to figure out a way to clean that stuff off there if I can. But uh, yeah, another nice big one. Here's my haul from the morning's digging. I'm uh, now going to have to go through the trouble of figuring out how to get all this stuff packed up and back to the truck without breaking it, which is going to be fun and interesting but totally worth it hey guys so this is pretty neat i'm out here with a buddy of mine and they found this thing i'm going to show you here and i'm going to have him explain to you exactly what it is we're looking at here which i know right now is my face so we'll get rid of that no one wants to see that so here you go this is a big uh plaster shell here and uh he's going to give you a lowdown on what we got here all right, well, inside this is a very big fish, a Cretaceous fish called Zephactinus. It had a big kind of bulldog face, I guess one could say. It was a high up predator. And, and um, this one was very large. The center of the vertebrae were at a size that it, they thought it was a plesiosaur at first when it was first found. But we came out here and <clears throat> excavated this quarry and put a jacket on it. Eventually, it's going to get kind of tunneled under the jacket will be kind of put underneath it under the sides we'll either 
use a big team with pry bars to flip it over or somehow get a backhoe up here, jack it the other side, and uh, fly it out of here with a helicopter. And then it'll get prepared in a lab somewhere. That's so cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. That, yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah. So where I've been digging then, you can see I got a little bit of a bench worked out over here, and this is just chock full of these 2D ammonites. And he said he was just finding tons of them when he was excavating his quarry. So that's where we're going to spend a little couple more hours today, see if we can find some more. So I'm driving back home, and first off, I'm just going to say I'm in Kansas, and it's 63 degrees and sunny, and it feels absolutely amazing. So that's awesome. But at any rate, as I was going through here, I happened to see a sign for this uh, Fick Museum, Fossil and History Museum, in this tiny little town in Kansas. So I popped in there. They have an amazing collection. Most of it's locally collected. Some of it's been donated from people who've come and visited over the years. But uh, at any rate, I want to show you a few of the pictures, but the really neat thing was they actually have a fossil Zephactus fish it's all spread out there. And I took a short video of it so you can check it out and see roughly what that fish that was underneath the plaster that, depending on where I put this in the video, you just saw. So anyways, check that out. This is the fish that's underneath that plaster that they found out there and were working on all last summer. And you got that little spiel about. tropic shale and the Naturita and it's interesting it's just this pavement of oysters through here really really neat and then if we swing around here here's the uh, tropic shale in cross section and we have a number of concretion horizons in here that may have ammonites in them so that's what we're going to go after so here's a look at these concretions and what they look like. I'm going to get a uh, cracking on it and see if I can open it up and find something awesome in there. I almost hit this thing with a hammer and I saw it right at the last second. It's Alicreoceros, Hetermorph Ammonite. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited. These, I like these a lot, all those rib patterns on there. Hopefully I can prep this thing out and see just how cool it looks. But uh, yeah, that was that was a close call right there. Just found another one. It's really tiny, but it's just the very outermost part of it is exposed, which is absolutely great because that means the whole thing is going to be protected by this limestone. And I'll be able to try my hand at prepping down to that thing and seeing how good it looks in there. So, man, this is finding this horizon has been great. So windy. I've been doing a whole lot of filming, but I just started taking apart this concretion and I found that right there, which is the outer edge of Warthoceros, which is a heteromorph ammonite. So it's coiled on one side, then it kind of comes up and around in a fish hook. So hopefully the rest of it's buried in there and I'll be able to prep that out. But that's really exciting. These are like one of the coolest things you can find out here. So it's nice to finally get one. If you look at this, just a pavement of these oysters and most of them are small, but every now and then you can find these real large ones which is pretty darn cool 
Let's see what else might be around here. There's another big one there, but it's pretty well weathered. Oh, yeah, it's not coming out unless they pull that whole block out. But uh, here's a nice, I'm guessing that maybe that's an uh, operculum. But I'll see what else I can find. Here we go. Here's a nice big one. That's pretty neat. I think I spotted another one here. Ow, got a cactus stuck into my finger now. Oh, there's a weathered one there. Another piece. This stuff seems pretty fragile. Wow. That would have been a monster. There's some large ones that are in the matrix. That's gotta be one of the biggest ones I've found. Huge. Ah, morning everybody. It's uh, what, day three of actually out collecting. It's about f fifth day I think that I've, since I left for the trip there. And uh, I found another spot last night and a lot of ammonites in it. And I actually collected quite a few, but it was getting dark and I couldn't haul them all back. So I thought I'd spend this morning um, going over there, picking up what I can, and seeing what else I can find in this spot, and uh, it should be should be pretty good there. So I think that's where I'm going to spend the morning. But I thought I'd uh, take you on the walk over there. It's not too far from the truck there, so it'll be a little bit of a nice trip there. All right, here we go. I gotta say, for there being like nothing here really in terms of vegetation, these places just never cease to amaze me how beautiful they are. I say that fully recognizing that's a big giant pile of cow crap right there. But if we, you know, pass on that, everything else I said holds true. Oh, I also forgot how much the temperature changes out in the desert. I, uh, yesterday we were working, I was down into my short sleeve shirt, I was so hot. I mean, I mean, it wasn't super hot out, it was probably like in the 50s, but when you're, you know, splitting concretions and stuff, it's warm. Then this morning, it's only 17 degrees right now, and my breath was freezing, on the tent, so when I'd open the tent flap, I'd get this rain of ice crystals all over me. So, you can see that the sun's starting to break over the edge, so hopefully it'll warm up here pretty quick. But here we are, we're at the spot, and uh, here's some of the goodies I found. There's a big one there. Hopefully, there's it goes underneath that a little bit. I can prep some of that out. But uh, another nice one there. So see, these are some of the nice pieces I found last night. I got that big chunk there. I brought a shovel with me this time because you can see how sluffy this is. So I'm trying to get to the competent stuff underneath. So I think I'm going to try and spend some time shoveling some of this dirt out of the way to get down to the exposures of the good stuff so that's what i'm gonna be doing here for a few hours all right so i think i found the layer that's at least more rich in ammonites and especially some of these incredibly big ones. I, I think that that's what that is. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of make out the outlines of the worlds. And I suspect that these are individual chambers on there. And they have this pretty amazing 
whitish orange color to them but I, I did just find this one in there as well and you can see there's a piece of another one right by my thumb and it looks like a piece of another one there and there and there which I'm going to be totally honest, I did not notice all of these until I started filming it because I'm like paleontologist of the year. But the problem is, is that it's down here and I got this stuff on top. This seems to be largely full of these Inoceramid clams. Um, there's a big one right there. If you want to look at it, I don't want to walk over there. But uh, I have this whole hump here that I'm sitting on though I think I'm gonna have to shovel out of the way so that I can get down to that zone there and hopefully start ripping out some nice ammonites all right I got decent exposure right there I just moved a ton of dirt probably not quite literally a ton but it sure felt like it anyways let's we'll see if we can get us some big giant ammonoids by us I mean me uh, I got this big chunk of limestone loose I think it's still above the zone that has the cephalopods but i gotta move it anyway so i figure i'll get it out of here and then just try and break it down so uh, there so check this out right there that to me looks like the faintest impression of an ammonite whirl right there here's that piece in the sun Looks pretty darn good, better than I thought. So I was just walking back, about to call it for this area and move on. I found a concretion laying on the ground, split it open, and there's an edge of a nice ammonite right there. It's mostly contained within the rock, which is great. I'll be able to prep it out and hopefully it'll look nice. Well, I made it back home safe and sound. I have all kinds of stuff to go through cut down make it look nice um, do a bit of prep work on 3d ammonites both heteromorphs and normal coiled stuff i have a lot of 2d material that i need to go through um, thank you so much for watching this video i know it was a bit longer than the other stuff i've posted but it was a long trip and there was a lot of neat stuff to show so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did and you want to see more of this stuff, you know, as they always say, uh, give the video a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks again. Also, if you like the music that you've heard throughout this video, it's from a band. It's actually a one person outfit out of Berlin, Germany, and the band's called Sleeping Pandora. And there's a link down in the description to the band campsite for that if you want to get any of that music or listen to more.